Hey guys, this is uh, Dimitri Clinton. I'm a community specialist here at Bandai Namco, and I'm here with Steven Akana. He's a brand manager uh, for Nino Kuni 2, and we are checking out the Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom demo that appeared at E3. We're just going to do a walkthrough, walkthrough real fast and show you some of the features, some of the gameplay, um, some of the boss battles, and just some of the cool uh, gameplay mechanics in the game. So, Steven, go ahead and start us off. Yeah, uh, I think uh, what we'll do is, um, so the demo that we had at um, E3, it actually features two um, separate areas. Uh -huh. Uh, for the demo, we really wanted to give people a chance to really just jump straight into the action. Uh, so both of the demos, uh, King's Cradle showcases a mid-size boss battle, and then um, Long Fang Lord of Flame, that one is featuring kind of more of an epic-sized boss battle. Nice, so, I'm excited. Um, both of them are a great way to kind of showcase um, some of the uh, some of the fighting mechanics that are in the game uh -huh. uh, because the combat is actually really different from the first Nino Kuni. Really unique, um, definitely. And also, uh, it goes into a bit of showing you some of the variety on how the Higgledies um, assist you in battle. Cool. Uh, one of the things that we were really um, really highlighting in uh, uh, at uh, E three was the fact that the Higgledies are almost like your fourth party member. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of stuff that they're able to do to be able to assist you, um, you know, based on situations, uh, things that they do on their own, things that you can command them to do. So uh, really excited to show everyone. Rocking. Um, so while we were talking, we actually heard uh, someone talk over us. Uh, that was Tani, one of the Sky Pirates, right? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little more background on her? So uh, you meet Tawny pretty early in the story. Um, it's shortly after uh, both uh, Evan and Roland uh, escape from Ding Dong Dell during the coup. Okay. Uh, so Tawny is the adopted daughter of the uh, leader of the Sky Pirates. Um, she's, uh, she's a tomboy, very, um, very impulsive. Uh, she sure is a person of action that mm -hmm. uh, is all about like, you know, you will prove who you are by showcasing uh, who you are by what you do. Got so um, the, in the story, Tani is a, um, along with Roland, they're both really supporting Evan in his journey to uh, become king again. And in this section, they're actually going to um, an area where they're going to um, be able to make a contract with their Kingsmaker. Okay. Um, and what's a Kingsmaker? So, Kingsmaker is, is uh, Kingmaker. there is, for every person that is yes. a king in, uh, in Evan's time. world, mm -hmm. uh, there is a Kingsmaker that basically well, they I'm make a bond I'm together I'm and they signify that person's right to be a king within I see. this kingdom. It's kind of getting approval to become like a full-fledged king. Yeah, or it's it's kind of proof proof of proof of their uh, ability to be a king. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I actually want to go back really fast. You uh, while it's we were talking, we also entered like a chibi-sized world map. Is that like a design choice that they did? Because I noticed now we're we ha we're, we have human-like proportions in our characters again. While we were on the map, we were kind of small, very old-school JRPG feel to it. So, when uh. When playing the game, like so, there's two distinctive uh, design styles that you're going to notice. Okay. One is uh, the very anime-looking uh, character designs that you see right before us right now. Yeah. Um, and they appear when you're in towns, if you're in a dungeon, um, and. Uh, there's also the other version, which is like kind of, it's an overworld. So in between different countries, uh, as you're traveling to these different worlds, you actually drop down into this little chibi form. And uh, within that world, there's, you know, instance battles and a bunch of other little uh, uh, little gameplay yeah. mechanics that appear. Interesting, uh, so it's not just exploring. Yeah, it's not just exploring and it's, and it's purposeful in that, you know, the design team, they wanted to be able to showcase that kind of juxtaposition of like these kind of lush, realistic uh, world environments against this more traditional animation style uh, dungeons that you're able to encounter. Got it. Okay, so design choice. Nice. 
and I'm guessing this is the trial that we're going to be have to that we're going to have to face. Yes. So, uh, and within this trial, actually, there's um, a couple different uh, activities that we do, but uh, for the demo specifically, um, it's fighting against uh, the character Dog. And he's one of the King's Makers, right? Uh, no, he is. He is a part of the uh, trial of courage. So. I see. In defeating Fog, um, Evan is able to, to showcase his uh, his ability to be uh, to be king. So it's it's a test of his courage. And Got it. And there we have the Higgledies, those small uh, little guys that have different, I guess, elemental ele elemental properties um, that can be used to help you, right? Yes. So if you see like the fire Higgledies, they're throwing little swords over at Fog right now. The water guys are throwing some water attacks. So. There's things that they'll do on their own, but if you see the uh, these abilities here, they're giving me an opportunity to be able to boost my uh, boost my attack power. Um, same with the wind abilities. If I uh, if they give me an opportunity, I believe they will give me a uh, shield buff. It's very cool. Like if you're in that vicinity, there that's how they work. I always thought you used like the right analog stick to control them, but no, they they move on their own. Yeah, so they have their own sensibilities and looking at what's going on in the battles, and you can tell there's a there's always a leader to each of the groups, and the leaders are kind of signified by the uh, they'll have like a little neck charm. Like if you look at the wind hazelies here. Uh, he has like, oh, a little right cape there. around him. Or wow. on the fire ones, there's a guy. He has a little uh, bulldog collar. Um, and they're called uh, Higgledy Heroes. Okay. So the Higgledy Heroes are almost like the, the generals of these little groups. So they're like saying, hey, come over here. We can give you a little bit of assistance. And then uh, boosted my, my attack power. That is some crazy attention to detail. I never, I didn't even notice that when I played the E3 demo originally, uh, that uh, some of them have like a collars or a charm around their neck. That is cool. Can you customize these Higgledy Heroes? Or are they kind of just, they just do their own thing? We don't have any uh, any information on customization for the okay. heroes, but um, there's a lot of cool information that's in the pipe. Uh -huh. uh, so I think this is a, a great uh, first outing for people to be able to get a, a glimpse at these uh, cute little sprites yes. and seeing how um, how they interact with you. Definitely. And if you saw right there, so when you press the R2 button, you can bring up your different skills. So there's uh, physical attacks, there's magic attacks. But if you hold down the button when you're doing that, you can actually use the different Higgledies to add additional elemental buffs to it. So if I'm doing a regular um, a regular special slash, it's going to just have physical damage like that. Uh -huh. um, but if I go ahead and uh, charge it, then I can start adding in fire, water, wind, and then when I do the attacks, oh, actually I was doing a field right there. Attention. And do you have to be within the specific Higgledy vicinity in order to charge the attack, or you can do it from anywhere? Uh, no, they'll they'll um, they'll come towards you as you're charging. I see. Um, but you do have to uh, you do have to hold down the charge for a little bit of time. The longer you hold it, the more different Higgledies will start to join in. Okay. I'm really impressed by these graphics. The art style is just amazing. In, the, in this game, and it, it just runs so smooth. Uh, it, it's going to be a crazy RPG once it's uh, once it's all done. I noticed there's like these blue orbs by your um, by your life bar there. Do you know what those do? So uh, if you look up at the life bar at the top, oh, there's oh, some one yeah, up. some golden thing just yeah. popped out. Oh, get back here. What is that? So when you collect one of these, it's when at certain points, if you interrupt the, uh, the enemy that you're fighting, mm -hmm. it'll give you one of these orbs that makes you uh, super overpowered for a short period of time. So you see that gold bar that's up at the top. Yes. Um, so that's showing how much time I have to actually utilize this. And you can actually chain it multiple times. So I'm like, oh, give me another one oh, of those wow. gold guys. So it can actually shorten the battles. Yes. OK. It's, a, it's one of those things that it's not required for you to be able to like, you don't have to be able to execute them to be able to win, but it does assist you in uh, getting through battles quicker because you're attacking with much more power. Got it. Uh, but going back to the to the blue orbs, so as you're uh, doing physical attacks, you see those uh, little gems that are above the life bar? Yes. As if I want to do a, a physical attack or a magical attack, Every time I do that, it's going to cost me one of those little pieces. Okay. But uh, I can refill those by going and doing some physical attacks against uh, 
against them. I see, okay. And that's how, it, so it doesn't recharge over time. You actually have to perform physical attacks in order to charge those meat, the, the spheres up. Yep. Got it, okay. And it looks like you're almost done with this battle. The golden overpowered mode really helped you out. Yeah, and like, and with this demo, we wanted to make sure that we were simplifying, um, since there's a lot of new concepts that we're showing people, we wanted to simplify some of the gameplay. Um, so rather than being able to swap between uh, Roland and Tani, uh, this demo locks you to just play as Evan. Okay. Uh, but in the full game, you're able to switch with your other party members on the fly. Well. Nice. I was going to ask about that if I wanted to just, like switch the role in. You're going down, dog. Wow. So there it is. It. Man, the character design is just ridiculous. He's in so this adorable game. for yeah. a giant enemy. Right? Mission clear. All right, one down, one to go. That horrible lump. He's not that horrible. I know, though. right? He's very cute. <laughs> and if we pass the trial, so then we see Roland. You um, can you tell us a little bit more about Roland? So Roland comes from a completely different world. Yes. Um, he ends up showing up in um, Evan's world uh, kind of during the commotion of Which the coup that's of occurring in Ding Dong Dell. Mm -hmm. And uh, Roland in his own world, he's actually, he's much older. He's probably in his mid 40s, late 40s. So he and appears younger when he's... Yeah, in he comes over to this world. He's, he's strangely, he's much younger. Um, and he, in his own world, is a president of his own country. So that might help Evan out no, a little bit. It's kind of why he decided to stay in Evan's world is that he sees a lot of himself in Evan and sees that, you know, Evan has a lot of potential to be a great leader. So okay. he decides that he's gonna stay in Evan's world and help uh, mentor and groom him to become uh, to become a king. Gotcha. And that's a big uh, a big theme throughout Nino Kuni 2 is that, you know, the your story, um, in this case Evan, mm -hmm. but the idea that your story is crafted by the bonds and connections of all those that are around you, mm -hmm. whether positive or negative. So when you have, um, there's some villainous characters like Otto Mausinger, there's positive characors like uh, Auntie Martha and the Higgledies. There's Batu. all these, yeah, there's all these different characters that will really shape Evan as he grows to become, uh, to become a king. I see. Yeah. So it, it sounds like it's a coming of age story for him. Exactly what it takes to become a king, a good king. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right, on to the next one, Long Fang. I'm excited for this one. I, I, I've, uh, I've seen the opening cutscene. It looks amazing. I think we should just sit back and let people enjoy it. Yeah, this, uh, this takes place in, um, in uh, an area that right after Evan makes his, uh, his king's bond with his kingmaker. Lofty, right? Uh, lofty. Yeah. Um, they end up traveling to uh, to this country called uh, Gold Path, and uh, in this world, there's um, it's a kind of it's a casino town, mm -hmm. and uh, that's Longfang. He's the guardian or the kingmaker for that country. I see. Okay. And for some reason, he starts uh, acting very aggressive towards Evan's party. Um, they believe that something nefarious is going on, so they end up having to take him on in an epic battle in a volcano. I saw that thing at the bottom, Butcher, Baker, Kingmaker. What is that? Is that just his title? It's it's kind of just that, you know, for people who've played the first Nino Kuni, um, they'll be happy to know that the team that, you know, was involved in the localization of the first game is also heavily involved in this one, mm -hmm. so a lot of the... The, the nuance that they give to the localization is, is uh, it's very similar and has that element of, even though the spells are usually don't for games that are, you know. I would say wittiness. Yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 something that's very unique to, uh, unique to the you know, mm -hmm. Definitely. And then we see Lofty at the bottom of the screen. He's uh, he's giving Evan advice, or? Uh, yeah, he is, um, he is a part of the party, so he, Ends up acting a bit as a, uh, you can almost think like a Jimmy Cricket. Like he's a bit of a uh, comic relief. He does a bit of story narration and uh, gives a bit of guidance to some of the elements that otherwise wouldn't really be described to you in the story. Mm. So uh, he plays that kind of character. It's almost like I think of him as, as a 
like a character in a play that their purpose is to to guide themes and um, also provide that that fun and uh, comic relief. It, it seems to be a common theme within this game is for Evan to have guidance. I mean, you have Roland, Tani, they, they, they all provide a different type of guidance. It, it's really interesting to see that. And that, that's, a, that's an interesting accent Lofty has. Yeah, I want to say that it's a Welsh Welsh, accent? yeah, yeah. Um, for those that played Nino Kuni 1, there was Mr. Drippy also had mm -hmm. a Welsh accent. Is he related to Mr. Drippy at all? Uh, no relation. No relation. Yeah. Got it. Um, so one of the things that I mentioned before about the uh, Hazeldees is how, given different situations, they might provide different uh, opportunities to to Evan. So in this case, there's uh, you're in a a volcano. There's uh, a lot of different fire elements that you have to look out for, whether it's from Long Feng himself or if it's from the uh, from the volcano itself. So you are about to die. I think you need to I heal know, up. I need to find those, those windows yeah. that you need to help me out. Yeah, there you go. So uh, the fire Higglies know that if um, in this environment that, you know, it's uh, that their power element is actually something that could be really helpful to Evan. Mm -hmm. So they will give you opportunities to be able to erect barriers that um, give you complete nullification from uh, fire damage. Interesting. So I just saw a, a green like orb or shield form around you. What was that from? That was from the uh, from the uh, wind higgledies. So okay. they're able to give you a uh, a buff that's going to help with. Um, uh, shielding and defense. Got it. Uh, the other thing I noticed during this battle, it's very strategic. You can't just hack and slash Long Fang. He backs up, he mm -hmm. comes forward, casts different attacks. You have to really use all elements of gameplay here. You have to use the Higgledees, you have to use Evan. Yeah, the, the battles are, are pretty dynamic in that. Super um, dynamic. You know, there's a lot of different things that you need to keep your eye on like in this case like you know the fire higgledies are going to give me an opportunity to have a fire barrier and I don't get any of that damage from breath of fire that he does mm -hmm. um, and those uh, those little fire rocks they'll explode if you don't um, if you don't do anything about them so yeah that's what I was actually going to ask you about why are you destroying the fire rocks that come down is there a purpose for that it will um, there's the oh, I meant to do an attack there um, there is the uh, the orbs to be able to do your special attack. Uh -huh. So not only is there a danger for having those fire uh, blocks there where they can explode and they can give you damage if like he breathes a uh, fireball at them, but it also helps you build up um, some of your uh, some of your orbs again. I see. This is a really tough battle. Um, I remember playing it at E3 and I thought I was just gonna breeze through. I was like, oh, they made this demo for E3 just so people <laughs> could pass it. I got smoked so many times, no pun intended. It, it, it was, like, it took a lot of strategy. I can't stress that enough. And with the real-time battle system also comes a lot of, like, more different moves. You're able to jump now during combat. You're able to roll. Once you take out those red rocks, it, uh, they, uh, is that what refills the blue spheres here? Uh, yeah, the, uh, if you see any time I destroy one of those rocks, there's uh, I think little, three little orbs will all pop out. Gotcha. So I'm guessing once you defeat Long Thing, and I don't know if he can really go into this, does he, you know, start helping you out? Is you know, is he vital to the story? You're just gonna have to get the game and find out. Yep, exactly. I figured that's the answer you'd give me. <laughs> Fair enough. There's obviously a reason for fighting him, so I'm, I'm sure we'll find out down the line. 
Um, can you talk about like the how many different Higgledies are we going to get? Are we going to see more than what we see here? Or is that another question where it's uh, find out down the line? It's like I, it's like I said. There's a lot of really cool. Uh, cool elements about the Higgledies yeah. that uh, we've yet to share. Excellent. Okay. But that's, uh, that's one of the, the great things about um, working in video games is that, you know, especially with something as wonderful as Nino and Cooney, there is so much stuff in here that we just can't wait to yeah. uh, share with us. We've barely scratched the surface, exactly. definitely. Um, Long Fang's design, it's, is that like a, he, he looks like one of those Chinese Oh, Dragons, like, like, a, like, a, like a dog, a lion? Yeah. Lion, I think it's a lion. It's kind of kind of lion, kind of kind of dog. Um, Definitely a dragon. Mm -hmm. I can tell this is a uh, time intensive battle. Yes. One other thing I've noticed is each of the characters have different weapons. Um, I, I, I don't even know if I should ask this. Are you going to be able to equip different weapons on the characters? I'm, pro I'm pretty sure I answered my own question and we'll find out <laughs> later on. But I did notice that in the demo that they all have different weapons. No, and it's true that, you know, they have, um, they have different weapons. There's different, uh, you know, Roland has, uh, you know, he has a long sword. He also has a gun that he's able to use. Right, I did see that in the cutscene. That's where I was actually heading towards was mm -hmm. the fact that Roland, he uses a sword, but I've seen him in a cutscene with a gun, with a strap. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting, bringing a gun into this world. It still blows me away the amount of detail level 5 is putting in the end. You see like the marks on, on uh, Long Fang's uh, scales there and his broken claws. things at a distance you're still able to cast spells and attack him. Yeah, you have um, magical spells that you're able to utilize and even and with those as well, like same with your other attacks, you're able to charge them through multiple attacks in his direction. Would you say Evan's more cat or more person? He is half and half. Half and half, okay. Does his race have a name? Or is it just cat people? Uh, let me see, it's Folk. Cat folk. I, I I think I've heard that. Yeah. You really dig in uh, Roland's hairstyle with the ponytail. He's yeah. bringing it back. <laughs> you don't see it too often, but he works it with the suit. I like that. And. One other thing I've noticed is the design choice of the characters really brings out the personality. Like you could tell Connie's a tomboy. She's got you know her two pigtails just sticking out. They're not they're not like braided or anything. She's just wild. She looks wild. And Roland's like buttoned up and suited, eloquent looking, if you will. Could definitely tell he's a present. Oh, five minutes remaining. Are you going to be able to do it, Stephen? Uh, don't hear me talking. It's because I'm trying to let Steven focus on the on the uh, on the last part of the battle. Like I said, it gets really tough, and it, it's it's hard for him to to focus and talk to me at the same time. I'm trying to just see like all of the different uh, areas I need to be. Oh, looking out for it does. Yeah, no, like I said, these battles, especially in Epic One, and, uh, or as, as one as big as this, there's a lot going on. He's got to dodge the stones. Help me, Higgledies, help me. He's got to ask help the Higgledies me. for help. And he's also uh, got to listen to me talk about Roland's hairstyle. <laughs> so there's a lot going on for Steven. I, I really respect the work that he's doing right now. It takes a lot.
Well, that's the cool thing with this, um, you know, with the different spells that you're able to cast. Like, you know, I can, I can keep track of my own health and I can heal on my own. Mm -hmm. um, it's just making sure that I'm, again, keeping track of all those different things that can be uh, that can be going on at one time. Got it. Even during the cutscene, you're able to attack him. That is interesting. So what's strange to me is we were at the gold, we were at Golden Paw one moment, and then like were we phased into another dimension, or is this still Golden Paw? He just wrecked it. It's hard to say. I'm, I, I guess it's a rhetorical question for myself because I'm pretty sure you don't even know that yet. You know, it just seems like he came down, and all of a sudden you're here. It almost seems like it's his like domain that he lives in. I think you got this. I think you're able. I I, I believe in you, Steven. So yeah, we're just uh. We're uh, having Steven finish this up. It's almost done here. It's almost taken Long Fang out. I believe he's gonna do it. I've seen I've seen him do it at E3. <laughs> so as you can tell, not gonna be a easy game. Um, I'm sure this ramps up. I'm sure this is a battle later on. Um, but yeah. Battles like this, it, it, it is a fully fledged RPG. It, it's like you know, it, it may have a, a dare I say it, kitty aesthetic, but there's a lot to it, um, and it'll wrap up and it'll teach you things. You're you're not gonna go in there blind just fighting Long Fang from the beginning. Well, I think the the one thing to think about is that you know the aesthetic is very much like um, most. Uh, when you think about most Ghibli style films mm -hmm. or Pixar films, Disney films, there's something that's very um, ageless and timeless. I, I like the fact that you mentioned Pixar, where it like it caters to kids, but there's like a, a lot of adult jokes. So it's like it it's for general audiences. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's jokes that adults will get, but kids can watch it too. And I think this this is uh, this is an analog to that where. Kids can check out the cool visuals and the cool, like, you know, animated art style. Uh, congratulations, Steven. Thank but you. adults will enjoy, like, the combat, mm -hmm. you know, and the depth of the game. So there we go. Mission clear. I knew you could do it, Steven. I had faith in you. Let's check out this after cutscene. That's a good question, Tani. It. It's King's Bond's been pinched, isn't it? Which means he's not a king. What does he mean by no pinched? More? Stolen? That's what the, uh, that's what, you know, like, I guess the Welsh term, pinched? I guess so. Yeah. If we don't get it back, and soon, your world's in big trouble. Rolling, man. He's, he's just a sharp dresser. I like the, uh, the scrunchie. We have to do something. He's rocking that. Sure we do. Very unique character designs. Evan uh, doesn't really have a hairstyle that uh, I would rock, but he makes it work with the cat ears. Very determined looking as, as Evan. So that's it. Uh, Nino Kuni 2, we just announced a new date. January 19th is when it's coming now. It's coming to PlayStation 4 and Steam, PC via Steam. Um, we're gonna have more details as the game's coming along. We're gonna try and get more playthroughs. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Steven, thanks again once again for joining me. It was awesome having you on. I'm glad you were the one playing and I wasn't. <laughs> you you passed uh, the, all the trials here today. Um, so yeah, thanks again guys for joining us and look forward uh, to more Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom content uh, as we get closer to the release date. Bye.